Today on What Went Wrong, the stories that made us who we are. Hi, I'm Brett Mauser, and I'm a big fan of TV shows. Are we all? Not so, not so much lately, mm, but no. uh, but uh, the, the, especially the stories I grew up with. I'll start with the the, the story of how of uh, one time, and I guess it was the first grade. Uh, one of my teachers, one of the, uh, the assignments in class, whatever it was, we were supposed to talk about. You know, we were supposed to say what we wanted to be when we grew up, or what we really wanted to aspire to be. And I said, I want to be a duke. So my parent, my, the teacher actually, I don't remember, it was, it was like one of the teacher, parent-teacher conferences, whatever. They pull my parent mother aside and she says, well, your, your, your son's great, but he's got very high, unrealistic, high expectations. He, he wants to be a duke. <laughs> and my mother just cracks up and she's, he wants to be a duke of hazard. Because <laughs> that was the show I was watching and I was... Uh, well done, big, Brett Bowser. Well done. I remember going out on the playground and playing, you know, uh, Dukes of Hazard. We always had to go rescue Daisy. Yeah. Um, well, who would want to rescue Daisy? Of course, I would. Um, but TV shows, you know, uh, I've been I've been catching up on a lot of them. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I, uh, I I get in those phases, and they're great because they're they're, they're serialized or they're episodic, one mm -hmm. or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but like uh, when we first started this, we were talking about Star Trek, and mm -hmm. I went back and I watched DS Nine. We were able to one watch my favorites. The end. I love DS Nine. Um, so some of the papers that I wrote in in college for a master's degree were analyzing TV shows. Uh, well, I did one about the uh, uh, the workplace family, and it was based around WKRP in Cincinnati. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing the coattails of one of our recent episodes about uh, favorite versus best. I can categorize my favorite shows as opposed to best shows, which right. I would say one of the best shows ever was MASH. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, it was a comedy, but it tackled such great issues. The cast was great. It was a terrific ensemble. How do you cast. have a comedy about the Korean War? I know. That goes three the, times as long yeah, as the Korean last War. last 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Or four times as long as the Korean War. The Korean War was only three years long. Yeah. Extra points if you know what years those are. And, but, it's, uh, and, and, and nobody will ever be able to beat the finale numbers of that because you only had three channels yeah, back then. Yeah, that's true. So just from a statistical standpoint, you're never going to be able to beat the numbers that the mm -hmm. MASH finale had. And yeah. I'll always remember that play, that, that helicopter, that chopper taking off and seeing goodbye written on yeah, written on in the stone on the, on the land pad. Um, the creepiness where all of a sudden their shelling stopped. Yeah. It got really quiet. Yeah. Um, but it, it, ta it tackled issues. It was it was it was a thirty minute sitcom that looked like a movie. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and well, it, it had was, been a movie. Yeah, it, not it a very good one. A not movie. a very good one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah no, no, nowhere near what the, what the show became. Mm -hmm. um, and then other people say Seinfeld, and I just I, I I I think Seinfeld was one of the turning points of of where TV started to go downhill. Because you no longer had moral characters. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. It was about selfish characters. Yeah. Um, and I feel that's what you get a lot in today. Um, now, while a lot of TV looks so much better, it's, the production value is skyrocketed. It captivates you a lot more than than than, than, a lot, than those earlier shows. Um, it's it doesn't have the the morality that it used to. Yeah. And I don't just mean like the sex and violence. I mean the stories that they told. You know, from from the leave it to the leave it to beavers to to the die dreamer genies. They had a mor every episode had a more had a had a moral to it. Yeah. Um, and the uh, I, I was watching the, the what what I'm what I'm on now is the Quantum Leap series. Yeah, those are so good. And it was in the middle of I guess maybe the second season. I was just watching. It just hit me. I said, "This is the perfect TV show," because you got it. it it's basically an anthology. Where every episode is different, it's a different plot, it's a different, you know, different time, different, time, different, time, different characters. Sam gets to jump into a different character every episode and deal with a different problem. It's almost like a writer's dream because every single episode you can do something completely different from the episode you just yeah. did. I just watched an episode last night. And the only night. characters that are the same are Sam and, and, and Al. Al. 
and I, I watched an episode last night about uh, the Old West. And he, the, the premise was he can only jump within his own lifetime. Yeah. And you can tell they wanted to do an Old West thing. Yeah. But they were able to figure out how to do this thing set in the 50s, you know, in, right. within his timeline. From, from an actor standpoint, to be able to have that kind of a role where you're playing one week uh, a kid with Down syndrome and the next a single mother. And then the next, uh, uh, a black female in a, in a, in a, a Supremes-like group. Hmm. Like when Monty Python, they would dress in drag all the time. It was, it, I, I, I didn't, the British, they find that hilarious. Yeah. You know, they, they love watching a man dressed in a dress. I'm like, eh. Yeah. But, but the other, epi- the, uh, another episode where he was in this, this Supremes-type group, he's in the, the pink, sh- you know, the pink sh- uh, Chaffel dress. Yeah. And he's doing the dances. I haven't laughed so hard in the longest time. Just yeah. seeing Sam Beckett dance, dance like the Supremes up there and sing. And then the next episode, he'd, he'd do something like shock theater where he's, he's getting sh- shock treatment. You know, It would go from comedy to drama and it blended so well. And then you had this friendship between Al and Sam. Which, in the beginning, Sam had Swiss cheese brain. He couldn't yeah. remember anything and, and had to learn to trust Al. And two polar opposites in the way he, Sam was such a, a Boy Scout and Al was the, oh, yeah. you know, look at that blonde over yeah. there. Um, well, he's a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, the, 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 the characters are so, uh, are, are so memorable, so well-rounded, and the way that they are able to weave in their personal stories and right. into right. that, and the sacrifices they made for one another. Uh, I think we were talking last week about the MI, one of the MIA episodes, yeah. where you know, where where in order to save Sam's life, Al put himself in a concentration camp for right. three more for three years, years. Yeah. exactly. Basically. Um, it was just such a well-written show, and every episode teaches you something, and you yeah. come away with something that uh, uh, being a better person. Yeah. And I'm watching the sacrifices that Sam made and the decisions he made that I'm like, I would do that now because I watched those shows growing up, yeah. and I built my ethics and my morals around shows like this. Right. Uh, one of the clips from WKRP that I use in class, in my public speaking classes, there's this scene where um, Venus Flytrap uh, is teaching uh, 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 a young black kid trying to keep him in high school, and he's like, if I can teach you about the atom... Um, in two minutes, will you stay in school? And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And he does it, He's uh, and he puts it, he frames it in a gang set situation. He's okay, there's this neighborhood, right? And there's this group of, of uh, 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 there's, there's one gang that just circles around the neighborhood. And we, they, they call themselves the, 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 you know, the, the, the electrons, yeah. you know, because they're real positive, you know, <laughs> uh, or they're you know, real negative, real dudes, negative dudes, real negative dudes, and they're always walking around making sure, you know, circling the neighborhood. And then you got these, the, the new guys, you know, and they're just right in the center. They just have this, you know, but the, you know, these other, the, 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 the pros, the, they call themselves the pros, and they're, uh, you know, they're real positive dudes, and they hang out with the new, you know, with, with the new guys. And then, you know, they want to come up with a new name. So, you know, since, they're, you know, you know what Tron is. And he talks about what Tron means. And yeah. he, well, so they call themselves the neutrons and the protons. And he teaches them the basic structure of the atom right. in two minutes. And I use that in public speaking to show how you, you know, how you can teach people by taking something that they're familiar with and using it in the metaphors or transferring it. I've done that. that. I have to do that whenever I'm trying to... People ask me questions about whenever something, whenever something aviation happens, everyone freaks out. You know, it's like, Jeff, what's this? What's that? And I've done like the dinner plate with the knife and up and down and all that stuff. Yeah, there's some complicated, complicated uh, issues that go on. And you could, a TV show back then was, was tackling some pretty heavy duty issues. One of my favorite shows when I was a kid was called Different Strokes. Mm-hmm. And those who aren't familiar with Different Strokes, it was a, a rich, uh, a rich uh, white guy named Mr. Drummond. And he had a daughter, Kimberly. And he had his um, uh, housekeeper, whose name I, whose name you, you never know because she dies. In the, in the premise of the show, she dies before the show. And he ends up adopting her two sons, well, Arnold and Willis. Willis being the older, Arnold being the younger. And it was Gary, uh, Gary, Gary, Coleman. Gary Coleman, 
who played and Todd Bridges. Todd Bridges, who played a brother, and Dana Plato. Dana Plato played his, the, his, his actor his, daughter. The actor, yeah, the actor's daughter. And how and they were in this high rise up on the sky. You know, they were in this in New York or Chicago or some damn place. And it was them being in the rich in the rich house and being adopted and taught by this man and with the, 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 the family coming together and being a family and how it all worked. And I didn't realize as a young, you know, seven, eight, nine year old that I was getting such lessons on morality and doing the right thing. Because it was funny. It was comedy, it was it was it was amusing. I didn't watch much T V. I watched Dukes of Hazard, uh, I watched Different Strokes. And that was about it, really. I mean, 18 when it came out in 83. Yeah. And then Knight Rider, who's in, in the title, One Man Can Make a Difference. One Man Can Make a Difference. Knight Rider came out in 83, and I started watching that. Was, it was actually a replacement show because it, it was in the spring. Ooh. A spring that it started up. Uh, and I'd never heard of Knight Rider, but it had a cool car, and I wanted, to, I wanted to see about that cool car and what that was about. And so I did. And yeah, you'd see these shows, and it was the, the whole, the same thing of like, it was like Kung Fu, the drifter going from town to town. You know, doing good for the people. You know, a team kind of modern day western, modern day westerns, and it was. Um, but I had no idea was why I was learning. I had no idea, but we were, and so you have to wonder what are kids learning now by watching these shows? What are you learning by watching Seinfeld? What are you weren't learning by watching certain shows? And I like I say there are certain shows who that give you a lesson that give you certain things. And uh, on my list of my favorite, uh, not sitcoms, but my favorite TV shows, which I don't. I don't watch television, but I've got stuff that I do watch, and I've got a list of them, and most of the ones I've got are shows that do teach positive lessons for the viewers, you know, and I can go through them if you want. Well, and, and, and it's, it's, it, I, I think one of the best people that, that, that does that is uh, uh, Quantum Link, Del, yeah. Donna Belisario. Yeah. Um, I, I, so you, if, if you read between the lines, he's a pretty conservative guy. Yeah. Uh, he, and right now, his big thing, NCIS. Yeah. Um, again, Scott Bakula. You know, well, yeah, Scott Bakula in, uh, in, uh, in NCIS New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, I so. love him. Well, and there was also like, it, it, well, the NCIS is, of course, top, top list. CSIs, I also like, because I like the processional. I like the, the not the processional, the procedurals, mm-hmm. not Catholics. Yeah. Like the procedural dramas and that kind of stuff. CSI was like that. Um, Remington Steel back in the day. Oh, yeah. You know, one of my favorite shows. And how uh, uh, Stephanie Zimbalist was just like, you know, what about, you know, with uh, with uh, Pierce Brosnan is this mm-hmm. Remington Steele, this British the con man, the con, the British con man who ends up ends up being a, a private eye with her, mm-hmm. um, uh, and of course like the the Equalizer, mm-hmm. you know, back at the day, you know, well, just uh, talking real quick about NCIS, uh, I, you, oh God, I can't believe uh, Mark Harmon's character uh, uh, Gibbs. Gibbs has those rules. Mm-hmm. You know, he has the roles that, he, that he, he's always... He's playing. one of the characters that... He is a character that is the anti... Everybody wants to be. He's he's mm-hmm. a former Marine. Uh, of course, the Marines, he's very straight-laced. Uh, he always worked very hard to do what he did. He was a sniper, which, of course, is extremely hard. Not just the concept of, like, long-range shooting, which, I, which I'm just getting into, and, oh, my God, seriously? Um... The amount of stuff that you, the, the amount of calculations that has to go on in your head to get that stuff right is just insurmountable. It's crazy. I mean, I thought flying was hard, and it is. But I mean, the whole idea of some of the stuff they come up with, and so you have to be very smart. He has to be very dedicated, very tough, and his analytical mind. And so he's like this, almost this. But he doesn't talk very much, so he's kind of like this, this quiet, dark horse kind of individual and he's the glue that holds everything together because if you really think about it I mean when NCIS came from JAG mm-hmm. by the way I yeah don't know if I remember, I remember that. that yeah so JAG was on JAG started in 96 which of course came from a few good men you know not 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 directly it was inspired, it by, was a, yeah. it was inspired yeah. by a few good men which had been in play for years made into a movie in 92 and then 96, JAG came out. And then in 2003, they spun off into NCIS, which has now spun off into NCIS Los Angeles, which I've seen like two episodes. Uh, NCIS New Orleans, which I was born in New Orleans, so I kind of have an affinity for the place, even though I don't like it there. But their food's amazing. And, of course, NCIS itself. And the, the characters they put in there, like, I mean, uh, Ziva David, who oh, is man. one of the few positive Jewish characters 
And she's not even Jewish. She's she's Colombian. Brazilian or something? She's Colombian or, Colombian or Brazilian? Yeah. She's from South America. Yeah. But she's a Jewish character. Uh, and of course, um, Mariana Sirtis, who after uh, Ziva David's... Spoilers! After Ziva David's father is killed, mm-hmm. then she becomes a Mossad director. Of course, who's, who doesn't think Deanna Troy would be awesome mm-hmm. as a Mossad director? It'd be dangerous this could be. But anyway... Um, but every week, and they have, they have, they have the, 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 the overarching storylines. They have characters that are complex, that are always somewhat ambiguous, because Gibbs himself is somewhat ambiguous. Yes, he has the rules. Yes, he has this, but he has a, he has a penchant for breaking the rules when it suits him, especially what he did to the, per, to the person who killed mm-hmm. his wife and his daughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's straight up murder, but he did it, and everyone's okay with it. You know, and so then, of course, the first time that ever happened was Tom Selleck in, in Tom Magnum. Selleck and Magnum P.I. He, he which, made that he made that yes. decision at that end episode to kill that guy in cold blood. In cold blood, first time you ever saw yeah. a TV hero do that, right? And I'm and, and, and it's one of the things that I've always liked about Magnum P.I. Other than the characters, because they were just fantastic. I mean, every one of those characters was awesome. Um, but talking about NCIS, we're talking about movie tropes. We're talking about you know the th- it's episodic. But the lessons are there. It's complicated. Do we do the right thing? Do we not do the right thing? Is the right thing the right thing? Because it's what I know is I hear this a lot from from younger kids. We well, shouldn't do that. You should do this. You should. It's like, is it always going to be that way? I remember as a kid, I believed everything was pretty black and white. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I guess the difference I <laughs> I was like my black and white did not enter into uh, um, specificities. I always believed in doing the right thing all the way around. But what the right thing was, was ambiguous. So if I thought that, I mean, not as a kid, but as I was getting older, is like ending this person's existence is the right thing to do. Is it the right thing to kill somebody? Absolutely not. The way I learned that was watching, you know, watching stuff in TV, watching stuff. Because you have to look at the A-team. Okay, they're doing the right thing, but they're outlaws. Mm-hmm. Why are they outlaws? They're, well, for a crime they didn't commit. So the question is, do you fight it in the law, but what if the law's against you? Well, then you go against the law. You do the Robin Hood thing. And people like, well, you should always obey the law. I was like, we didn't obey the law in 1775 when we told, when we, when we told the guys given the law to go f- themselves. Yeah. Like, well, it's not the same thing. Why not? Is it just not the same thing as we won? Because had we lost, they would have told the story about, you know, the, the British Civil War, the, the colonial Civil War. The rebels. The rebels. And we would, have been the, we would have been the Confederates with our slaves. We would have been the evil ones, right? Mm-hmm. But in fact, what, the fact was we won. And so we're not the bad guys. We're the good guys because we wrote the history. But if you learn it from the British perspective, we're just the guys who didn't want to pay our taxes <laughs> for the war we just fought against the Indians <laughs> and the French. Whose side, who's right? Who's wrong? Does it matter? And well, it does. It does matter. But the point is, it's from your perspective. I, as a kid of learning and watching TV shows and seeing things and watching morality, and I have my own morality from my parents and my religion and everything mm-hmm. else like that. Um, and people often wonder how I could be, not religious, but how I could have religion and yet have done some of the things I've done. And I'm like, but you did this, but you did that. Yep, and I got paid quite a bit of money for it. And I was like, well, it's even worse. And I was like, <laughs> is it? Because my morality doesn't stem from your concept of right and wrong. Um, one of the things my father used to tell me was look at the long game. Play the long game. You may, you may have heard me say it. Play the long game. Play the long game. Um, what you do now may or may not be right compared to what you are seeing now, but it may be in the long run. Um, in the movie Serenity, uh, when you have the operative, and he's like, I'm trying to build a better world. He's like, well, you know, you don't, by doing this, by killing people, by doing this stuff. He's like, I'm not building this world for me. I'm building it for my future. Now, he is what we consider an evil character. But under his auspice, uh, under the auspices of what he considers, he's not an evil character. He's doing the right thing. Is he or is he not? Now, it just turns out that the people who were he was working for turned out to be, they were, they were kind of evil and twisted, right? Mm-hmm. But they were just trying to make a better world. How many times have you heard, we're doing it for the children. It's because of safety. It's because we need to do this. How many times have you heard that from your masters and it's the wrong thing? How many times have you, you, the person... Um, ever thought, oh, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to do the thing, and f*** the man. But it turns out there's always a man telling you what to do. Who are you following? Um, one of the things, talking about Firefly and all that stuff, because uh, I'm a fan of Firefly, 
I'll wear my Firefly jersey next time. I'm wearing my, <laughs> wearing my Game of Thrones jersey today. <laughs> but you had one of these, I had a conversation with a girl one time, and she was talking about how this, that thing, and I was like, see, the thing is, because we're talking about Firefly, and then she kind of went to the politics, I don't know why, but she did. And I said, yeah, you're nothing but a purple belly, which, of course, is the, the, the slang, the, the really the bad word for the bad guys. It's like, I'm not, I was like, you're, you, you want order, you want this, you want to be given stuff, as opposed to living on the fringe and doing what you want to do. It says, you're one of the, it says, you're the ones that we fought the war against. You're not a brown shirt, get off my f***ing ship. And she never thought about it before, but yeah, she's, she wants order, she wants this, she wants that. She wants what the show said the bad guys were trying to bring you, and that's the I the Rebel. It's one of the things that Malcolm Reynolds said. They aim to make people better, and I do not, I do not agree with that. Mm-hmm. You know, Because that's, that's why the Reavers happened. But you should be aware of what you're learning, because you may believe a certain thing, in your, in your whatever, but then when you look at what you actually think, it's not what you may have considered. Because in that case, she was, you know, well, I'm one of the brown shirts. I'm one of the guys. I'm one of this. Brown coats. Oh, yeah, brown shirts. Brown shirts, completely different. <laughs> Wrong one. Sorry about that, kids. Let me try that again. She was thinking she, she was one of the brown coats. You know, and so, you know I'm, one of the, I'm one of this. It was like, oh, no, honey, you're, you're, you're one of the core. You're one of the purple bellies. You're one of the unionists. You're one of, you're one of the guys who fought the guys who were the brown coats. You were the ones who were holding everybody else down and trying to make a better world by, you know, gassing their planet and making them all go f***ing crazy or die. So what lesson are you learning by what you're watching? There's so many TV shows I can talk about, all the things I've learned and all the things I've watched, and they're varied and amazing. But the problem was, and the problem is, there's so few of them now. What are the kids learning now? Like we learned then, what are they learning now? Well, and it's also, I mean, look at the people that are, that are making them. You know, we can look at we, we, a lot of the shows we've talked about, uh, NCIS, Quantum Leap, Donald Belisario. Donald Belisario. I would say from, from, you know, I've never met the guy, but I've had experience with his production company um, that just screams to me, this is a great guy. Mm-hmm. There, was a, uh, there was an episode, I guess it was like the season two cliffhanger or whatever, and I was in the middle of moving to uh, California or san antonio or something and i saw there was a cliffhanger ending where sam and al switched places now mm. he now sam was the hologram and and uh, uh, uh but it, it left off they switched places yeah now what now what and i didn't get to see the opening season yeah. the opening i had no idea what happened and I somehow, and this is before the internet yeah this is before digital streaming that would have been like 90 before 91 DVDs. yeah this was before DVDs, you know, where you could get, you know, the, the box sets and everything. And I wanted to see this episode. VCRs hadn't been out very long at that point. Yeah. Um, so I, I tracked down the number, you know, the, the address, and I wrote them a very nice letter just mm-hmm. saying, explaining, look, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Quantum Leap. I saw this episode where this happened. It was the cliffhanger of last season. I was not able to see the opening. Is there any way, how can I see this episode? And two weeks later, I got a VHS tape in the mail Get out. from Belisario Productions of that episode. Oh man! And it was it, I was able to watch it, and and they didn't have to do that. No. They could have just chunked it, you know, and and or you know, of course, in today they just say send me a link or something. But this took time to go record, dub a tape, you know, an hour of their time, yeah, at least, you know, uh, to dub the tape, pack it up, mail it off. Didn't charge me anything. Wow. They didn't say, "Hey, can you send us a you know, send us a check for five bucks for the postage," and that can be seen in their TV shows that this is the type of person, this is the type of company that is going to do that for it, its audience and its fans. Yeah, you can see that they're decent people through the morality and the ethics that they teach in those shows. Right, and I just don't feel like you're going to get that in something like a Game of Thrones. Oh no. I mean, Game of Thrones was that. They, they had all kinds. Of, I have watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. I was actually why I'm wearing this. It was the it was the uh, the Battle of the Wall when the Black Watch, or sorry, the Night's Watch was fighting the 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 Wildlings. Um, the one episode I watched just because I happened to watch it. Uh, I like the concept of the of the Night's Watch because uh, you know out on a on a uh, out on a desolate place doing your stuff in the freezing cold. Huh? Where have I done that before? Mm-hmm. You know. I like that idea. 
um, and kind of the, the, the idea of giving up your sense of self for something greater. You know, even if you're the last, even if you're, if it's the last chance, Charlie, you know, even if this is the last place you can go, the second sons and the third sons go to the, go to the Night's Watch and, and die on the wall, like an honorable good death, which honestly we all want, at least I do, mm-hmm. you know, because um, everyone gets to die. The question is, how do you die? And that would be an honorable. Or make it worth. You could make it worth death. And it did that in the Innocent Saga yeah. where Sergio or Fish is asking Carolyn. Do you want to die a pointless death or one with meaning? That's a really stupid question. Well, but yet so many people strive to have no yeah. no point in their life or death. Well, because the thing is, it's not like you're not going to get to die. Yeah. It's not like if you play it safe, you're not going to die. Um, well, make it worthwhile. Make it worthwhile. That Like the... the 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 guys who died with the Texas Independence Day just having been passed, uh, just just having up and uh, the Battle of San Jacinto on its way, um, you know the the guys who died at the Alamo, you know would you rather die at the Alamo or Goliad? Mm-hmm. You're gonna die in both places, but would you would you rather die fighting or being surrendered and just being shot? You know, you know you're both martyrs for Texas as they say, but wouldn't you want to mean something? And I as a as a kid talking about morality decided when I was very young that I wanted my death to mean something was why I wanted to go into the military because I figured my father survived, uh, my grandfather survived, but a lot of his family didn't. So I thought I could go do that. That's what I learned as a kid, and I learned it from my family, but also watching TV and seeing those things and seeing those places and being like. If I'm going to do something with my life, make it worthwhile.